Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the APS Shell Gauge Guide, for lack of a better title. Probably won't think of a better one before this video goes up, but oh well. So last time uh, on the From the Depths, which was a while ago, sorry about that, real life got in the way, uh, we explored all the shell components and like how they all fit together and all that kind of stuff. Now we will do what I wanted to do then, but couldn't manage, and that is give a rundown of what kinds of shells work at different gauges. And there are an awful lot of potential shell types in From the Depths because, geez, there's 35 shell components and you could divide them in a huge amount of ways. Some work better than others naturally, but uh, there's certainly more variety possible than there was before due to recent changes. And so we're going to go through a few of them today, just kind of giving examples of what can work at certain shell sizes. But there is a short answer to this, so I don't know how long this video is going to be. Probably quite long, knowing how I work. And the short answer to what shells work at what gauges is below 100 millimeters. What works is, well, consistently at least in my testing, is shape charges, so heat, and timed fragmentation with the frag set to 180 degrees. That's below 100 millimeters. Above 100 millimeters, almost anything can be useful, provided that you do one of two things. That you stack enough warheads in them, or if uh, you put, dump enough rail power into them. So, and uh, I should mention as well, it's like uh, for non rail guns, the whole below 100 millimeters, it's heat and time frag. Above 100 millimeters, it can be anything. But railguns tend to put a different spin on this. We won't be covering railguns this time. That'll probably be next time, or sometime after that, whenever people want. Might need a break from APS after all this APS stuff. So, what do we have here? So we're gonna start with the small stuff. There's our handy target over there, which isn't the best target right now, but don't worry, we'll spawn better ones in. And here we have three guns with three different kinds of ammunition. So to start off with, we've got the smallest gauge possible, 18 millimeters. This took a while to figure out what is useful at this gauge because back in the day what worked at this gauge was frag and that was about it. Now it what really works well is heat or as I said before heat or type frag is what works well at this gauge and this is a heat gun so it's not the best example of one because uh, the Tetris is a little is a wee bit rushed and like it could fire longer quite consistently. I'll give you an idea how this fires. So it fires pretty darn quickly. It fires about 357 rounds per minute. So about 0. Uh, 17 seconds per sh uh, between each shot. And it spits out uh, this very long shell here. So we've got a bunch of gunpowder casings and four uh, small gauges. It's actually quite a good idea to use uh, more gunpowder than I've used here, simply to get the shell speed up. And lots and lots of high explosive uh, warhead bodies, and a shape charge head, with the penetration factor set to 0.9, because that gets the penetration factor up to a nice high standard. So about 20 is a good number, because that'll reach through multiple layers of metal, it'll reach through uh, one or two layers of heavy armor, and that's all very nice. And so. Also, inertial fuse, base bleeder, and uh, the inaccuracy apparently, like, I don't know. I have been told that base bleeders are not as good as they used to be, but I just can't resist using them. It's like force of habit, really. But in any case, uh, this shell could also, by the way, be about twice as long as it is. So you can see down here in the info, it needs a one meter shell rack. It's only 540 millimeters long, so this could be a lot longer. Uh, it would uh, drop the fire rate a little bit, but... Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the ball game, I'm afraid. So, it does pretty lousy damage per shell, so it only does uh, spits out four heat fragments and 62 damage per fragment. However, uh, this penetration metric means it can just quite happily reach uh, straight through large layers of armor, well, thick layers of armor rather, and that 62 damage, uh, particularly at the rate of fire, or like over 300 rounds per minute, is easily enough to uh, cause a bit of damage. So the Marauder is not the best target for this, by the way, because the Marauder is mostly empty space. And 
uh, wide empty space is a kind of good counter to heat. So instead, what we are going to do is we're going to spawn in something that uh, can get uh, damaged quite well by this. So I should mention as well, below 100 millimeters, uh, what? Well, just this, uh, what I consider small is about 18 to 100 millimeters. Your mileage may vary on that. But suffice to say, that's anti-aircraft gun territory. That's for shooting small erratic targets, because you have a very high rate of fire. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, if we spawn in something that is uh, durable, but not too durable. So we've got this moray right here. And one. So already you can see up in the top right corner that uh, the damage is being inflicted. Uh, can you please uh, hit on target? I still hate the way the AI aims in this game. It's a little bit annoying. You can see bits flying off, balloons popping off. And this thing is just casually reaching through this big honking big airship. And yeah, now the damage is building up. You see, oh, local weapon controller popping off. So yeah, these tiny, tiny heat guns uh, make pretty darn good secondaries simply because uh, they are death to planes, especially small ones if they hit them. And against larger targets, they tend to just reach through and just... What's that? Oh, a missile ejector just popped that off. Simply because they tend to do scratch damage inside the target. So that's dropped 100% health. And here we've got this thing reloading. It is a belt feeder, so... Uh, it is entirely possible to set up a belt feeder in a way that means it doesn't uh, have to pause at all during firing. I didn't do that this time because I couldn't be bothered. Yep, so that number is ticking up you like against the right kind of target. Well, that just got cut straight off pretty much. And against uh, tiny little planes, so where do we have here? Let's have a plane, let's have... Let's have this thing. We have the Felix Geiger, which is actually a pretty armored plane. Gotta wait for the detection system. And already, what's flying off there? Ah, wing bits. And already asymmetric thrust. So these uh, little 18mm heat guns, I should mention, they're not great at outright killing uh, most things, but they are great at uh, just disabling them and reducing their effectiveness. This thing was already flying funny, just after landing a few shots. And immediately, yep, that's the engines taken out right there. The 62 damage per fragment uh, is not a lot, but if those fragments go straight into the engines, that is plenty enough. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Okay, so that about does it for the 18mm heat. This is a... Uh, I'm not gonna say it's a super strong uh, shell, I remember showing this off before. It's not as strong as it once was. It used to be ridiculous. And then it got brought back down to sane levels. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It is probably one of the be best things you can, uh, or at least the best thing I've found to work at minimum APS gauge. So moving on, that was already uh, longer than I intended. Now we've now got this 60 millimeter gun here and it is also a, is this? A, what I think it is? Yep, this is also a belt feeder. So you want to be careful with a belt fed uh, anything really because belt feeders are expensive. Like if you are gonna, gonna get a better rate of fire with two regular autoloaders instead of one belt feeder, you're probably better off going for the autoloader simply because this thing is more than twice the cost of this now. In fact, APS components all across the board are pretty expensive so uh, you better be sure of whatever job uh, they're going to do. Like, particularly clips. Like, clips clips are pricey, man. Why are clips so expensive? In any case, so this is a timed frag gun. So what we have here is uh, the shell, bunch of gunpowder, face bleeder again, timed fuse, that's set to maximum just because I always do that, and a whole bunch of frag warheads, including the frag head, set to 180 degrees. Now, frag is not nearly as powerful as it used to be. Which is a good thing, because it used to be completely ridiculous. 851 uh, damage per fragment, 6 AP. That isn't great damage, and it spits out 9 of them in a 180 degree arc. So, that's not many fragments, it's not a huge amount of damage. This thing has a pretty darn good rate of fire, though. And uh, when you're shooting at uh, small, erratic, uh, squishy targets, like planes, 
Uh, that is plenty enough damage. So this thing also does about... I think this has a higher rate of fire than this does. No, it doesn't, but it feels like it almost. 322.2 rounds per minute, so let's spawn in something for it to shoot at. So... A couple of flying squirrels. Nope, not you. You. So bang, 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 bang. So that's already one squirrel disabled. And that's the other squirrel disabled. Now, you might be thinking the squirrel isn't like that uh, much of a problem because it's got exposed gunpowder barrels all over it. How about something a little bit more annoying? So, what's that spawn in a hake? So the hake is a pain in the is a pain in the buttocks. So let's track this thing. It's also very delicate, so the Hake is a really good uh, target uh, dummy. Uh, if you're wanting to practice shooting, well, designing anything that shoots down things that are very fragile, but also pretty hard to hit. And it only gets worse when it gets damaged. Because it's made pretty much out of, uh, well, it's made out of styrofoam, pretty much. So yeah, Timed Frag is still pretty darn good at swatting planes out of the air. And also against anything that's made of squishy material, like wood. So if you spawn in, what's uh, something? What's something that's squishy? So that's all. Oh, that's pretty squishy. Let's spawn in a frantic chicken. So frantic chicken, pretty squishy wooden thing. Just the deep water guard in general is just yep. That there it goes. Like, that 180, 851 damage per fragment is a lot more significant when they're guaranteed at least one fragment to hit every time. And also, uh, when you have a rate of fire like this. Lots of bits flying off. Did this, this thing got updated. I don't remember the chicken looking like this. What happened to my chicken? Interesting. And there it is. Drop dead in the water and the block confetti continues. So, time frag, heat, that's below 100 millimeters. Once you get to 100 millimeters, however, things get a little bit more interesting and the range of shells you can use opens up a bit. So, what is this? What is this thing right here? This is a kinetic shell and it's about at 100 millimeters that they start to get kind of useful. So, it's not fantastic. Uh, the damage isn't. Uh, nearly as good as it used to be. Uh, you could easily one-shot metal blocks, well, metal beams with kinetic shells uh, back in the day without uh, making the shell too big in terms of length or gauge. This is more modest, so this is just over 1,200 uh, kinetic damage. Armor piercing is 54.3, lots of solid warheads, and an armor piercing head. And as of just the other day, uh, composite heads have been renamed to this, which is great because that's more obvious what it is and what it does. So very pointy tip like that, and pretty much it's also quite fast, so 862 meters per second, pretty darn accurate. This is kind of like an automatic rifle in terms of what it does. So let's spawn in something a little bit more tanky than, than what we've been doing before. Let's have... Let's have... What's something... Ooh, let's have a Grey Talon airship. Spawn in a machination. A machination. So, boom, boom, boom. Medium gauge uh, APS, by the way, sounds great. And you'll see already bits are flying off this thing. So, against uh, targets which uh, are kind of resistant to heat, or they're kind of resistant to time frag, so in other words, armored things, uh, shields aren't really something to be bothered about uh, anymore, by the way, because they're really bad. You'll see a lot of these shells are just happily getting through. Just zip, 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 zip. And, yep, that, whoa, that looks significant. So the fact that they can't just punch through multiple metal beams isn't a huge deal, because there's a lot of things that are exposed on craft which are a lot more delicate than a full metal beam. And uh, kinetic shells like this quite happily tear those right off. So what is being shot at right here? They also I tend to find that this uh, this 100 millimeter kinetic gun uh, tends to shoot off thrusters quite easily. So because it's like over a thousand damage per pop, it has a pretty decent rate. It fires about two shots every second. 
So yeah, it's putting a dent on this thing that it wouldn't have made a dent on uh, in days gone by. See, whoop, see, there's a cram cannon. Come on. Basically, kinetic shells are kind of like they do less raw damage than, well, chemical shells. But their critical hit uh, ability is great because when they hit the right spot, jeez, they do damage. They shear off barrels, they pop thrusters, they like rip daddy blades off. Like, they also tend to, like, yeah. So, whoop, yeah, that looked important. What was that? Oh, that was a whole bunch of ERA. Never mind. Nope, nope, that was an AI component. If this is just one of these guns. So, yeah. I also, a comment on my Tetris, uh, as of right now, it's not great. What I've done here is I've started with a base of uh, coolers. And the great thing about uh, these little cooling vent splitters now is that you can stick autoloaders on them now. They connect now, which makes it very easy to have this kind of bed of coolers and just you uh, snake them back and forth across your turret platform and wherever there's a gap you just stick a recoil absorber just because why not? It fills the space in. It's not great for guns that don't require much cooling and it is quite expensive but it does save you having to snake back and forth like within the height of the turret itself and also saves you having to stick uh, expensive components uh, above deck. So, that's my comment on that. So that's the small gun, so you've got your heat gun, you've got your time frag, and you've got, uh, on the larger side, kinetic rounds. So, what's next? What's next? What's next is uh, an example of what an anti-aircraft setup would look like. So, ah! It's a weird bug. So right here, we've got uh, the the two of the 60mm guns we were talking about before, and two 18mm heat guns. So, just like in the real world, the big outside, if you're going to use anti-aircraft guns, uh, it's best to have more than one at once. If you want something that just, uh, you fire one shot and it takes the aircraft out of the sky, that's called a missile, or a laser. Uh, you don't really use guns for that. But uh, once things get a bit close, and particularly if uh, they do things like this, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. Things that are resistant to lasers or missiles, so here we have this expert level white uh, flare design called the Spike. And I remember ages ago I was testing simple lasers and this thing surprised me because it has a laser absorbing shield, which makes it really resistant to simple lasers. And I believe it also has countermeasures on it somewhere. I don't know where it hides them, but I'm pretty sure they're there. It's also pretty fast, and it's also uh, got layers of metal on it, so it's a bit of an issue. And let's spawn in two of these guys, just for giggles. So this is something like what you'd stick on the side of your battleship. And combining these two shell types, so timed frag and those tiny, tiny heat shells, yeah, that is the result. They just can casually reach through, uh, the heat shells just reach straight through armored craft, and the time frag shreds whatever's on the outside, so it's a pretty good combo. And that's AI dead right there. And on the approach, it just, it does that, and it's really fantastic. So let's see that again, because that was really awesome. Let's try that with a fury. It's So the Fury is quite annoying, it's a godly uh, level Steel Striders craft, and as you can see we're, st we're stripping bits off it with this battery we've got here. So yeah, this is one of my favorite shell combos really, is uh, time frag and heat for anti-aircraft purposes, because a lot of uh, a lot of flying things are from the depths are actually quite well armored, so yeah. That heat is quite good. Jeez. Block confetti. And this is a very fast little, uh, little. It's a fast plane. It goes over 180 meters per second. It does fly in a straight line, which makes life a bit easier. It's really on the, as it's flying away, that it gets shot at quite a lot. So yeah, this thing does take a while to shoot down, even if you have things that can take it. Also, I could watch these things fire forever. Ooh. 
Whoop, that looked important. Yes, it did. Okay, enough of that. So, you get the idea. Small guns, anti-aircraft, heat, time track kinetic, and I keep being distracted. So, what is next? What is next? What is next is medium gauge shells. So over here. Now, medium gauge is pretty much what I call anything between 100 to about 300 millimeters. That's not what I want to do. So we've got a few interesting things right here. First up, we have a 175 millimeter high explosive gun. So this is the shell, lots of stacked warheads, and stacked uh, HE isn't as good as it was when this whole big APS update first landed, uh, but it's still pretty good. So it's got, only got each successive HE warhead that you add does about 80% of the damage of the last one. So this thing does about 3,000 damage. Probably could uh, trim a few of these off. Uh, not particularly fast, 363 meters per second. But yeah, above uh, 100 or about 150 millimeters, high explosive starts to get in uh, really handy. So it also sounds pretty cool. So we go here. And what shall we shoot at? What explodes nicely? Let's have... Let's have this guy. So we have a helmet chopper. So decent rate of fire. Oh yeah, I forgot about this thing. This thing's annoying. So slow shells aren't your best idea with APS because one of their main advantages is that their shells are fast. Also, the AI still aims like a freak. Oh my goodness, yeah. High explosive does grand things against things, uh, well, things like this. Things with lots of exposed, non-armored components. It's actually a pretty good testing dummy. Jeez. Possibly not the most uh, tough target I could uh, have picked, but certainly one of the more satisfying ones. Jeez, look at that. I did promise more boom in this episode. You know, also handy thing to mention, uh, Multi-barreled guns are more inaccurate, so really only use them if you really want to avoid using coolers. So that's that gun. Number two, what's number two? This is a 225mm gun, and I have to say, a roughly 200mm, one of my favorite gauges. It's just, it, there's so many things that work well at that gauge. But what's stuck in here? This is a squash head. So, Hesh is pretty darn strong. It, uh... Uh, people tend to disagree on how exactly strong it is, but against something that is uh, not built uh, with it in mind, it's pretty darn strong. So, what's something that is a perfect example of that? I would say... Stockade. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Excuse you. So, I've talked about squash heads at length, and... At medium gauge, they really start doing quite well, because they have enough uh, thump damage, they have enough uh, spalling metric, well, it just completely knocked off that gun, just casually, something like two shells landed on it. And craft like this, which uh, are made almost entirely out of alloy and metal, with no wooden spall liner, uh, yeah, they, the Hesh makes a real mess of this. And, yeah, I keep getting distracted by all the delicious block confetti. So bits, 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 bits. And 200mm guns sound so good. It sounds super lovely. Uh, wacky uh, floor Tetris, as before. And now what's here, number three. This is a 300mm gun. This is where, this is the tipping point where I consider like medium gauge guns to kind of start turning kind of big. So what is this thing? This is a 300mm gun. What's it loaded with? And this is heat again. So heat is 
as I mentioned in the last video, this shape charges are effective at pretty much any gauge you care to name. Provided you stack enough warheads behind them, they will reach through armor and they will tickle the delicate insides of whatever thing they're shooting at. So, this is a big heat shell, so you would have seen before uh, what small ones do, they just spam them. And once you get up to here, you don't need to spam them as much, even though this has still got a pretty decent rate of fire. It fires just over one shot per second, consistently, so... What is something that is good for that, so... I want to shoot at something that uh, is very vulnerable to heat, so I can show it off. The Kraken. Bang, 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 bang. So immediately, starts disabling things. Come on, land on a gun, land on a gun, land on a gun for daddy. Come on. Right here, please. Ah, yeah, that. So heat, just the fact that uh, it's pretty easy to get a strong penetration metric, and the fact that it just reaches right through armor like it's no one's business. Heat is strong. Heat is very strong. In fact, I'm not sure if it counts as cheesy, because uh, the defense is quite simple. Just have, uh, l like, air gaps. At least one air gap uh, in your armor scheme, and suddenly heat is considerably less powerful. Against things that are very compact, and especially against uh, things like the Kraken, uh, which uh, tends to have quite volatile components just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. What's happening in here? Great things. Yeah, you can see there's bits missing out of these engines right here, thanks to this big heat gun. Okay, whoa. That, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, things are exploding. Things are very much exploding. I like that. I like that a lot. So that's medium guns. Uh, medium gauge APS, by the way, is probably the one that these days you'll find yourself using the most. Simply because most things, well, pretty much everything can work at this gauge. And it's that right uh, blend, that right uh, combination of rate of fire and damage per shell, and also cost. Also satisfaction, because they sound cool. Let's hear this again. And let's hear this again. Excuse you. And let's hear this again. Sounds beautiful. Now, we're gonna get to the big guns. So now, what we have here, we have what I consider to be... Ah! Not again. So this is the big guns, and you'll notice that uh, for this fortress there is a lot of ammo processors and resource storage containers, because this is where, well, all APS are pretty um, ammunition hungry. Uh, these guys especially, once you start getting shells above 300mm, you are going to need a lot of ammunition for them. So what do we got here? We've got three guns again, and the first one is uh, kind of a legacy gun. This is 333mm. And it's a belt feeder. So this is what some of you who know your APS pretty well would call a belt blaster. So in the day what this meant is the thing uses belt feeders but uh, considering it can only hold about three shells and you have more than three inputs on it, uh, the split second it's uh, depleted it refills again. So there's no reload time to speak of. This one isn't super efficient, I didn't do all the math but it still has pretty consistent rate of fire, uh, about 48.9 rounds per minute. And actually, yeah, if I jammed more coolers on this, it could go a lot further. So, yeah, I probably should jam more coolers on it. Let's just do that quickly. And one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. See, I didn't, ah, now I remember why I didn't want to do that. I didn't want it to look silly. Okay, so now it's about, okay. Max fire rate is 60 per minute. Cool, that'll do, that'll do pig. Uh, nope, that won't do pig. Now it's 60 rounds per minute, that's nice. With a ridiculously long turret booty. 
And now we go, whoop, let's turn all this off, turn God Mode on, and what do we have here? We have the Belt Blaster. So this is a squash head, and this is about the smallest uh, three segment shell that you can get at a high gauge. So this is one of the reasons this shell was so so good, is because you could get gunpowder casing, uh, HE warhead body, and a squash head, and this is like almost exactly one meter long. So this still works, by the way. It is doesn't feel quite as strong uh, as it once did. What's something that uh, is good for this? The glass. So shells are pretty slow, even though they're faster than they used to be. But this is still Hesh. It still uh, does that thing that Hesh does best, which is uh, against armored bricks. It uh, destroys both the inside and outside quite nicely. Also love how the color of Hesh has changed. This is a delightful pink color, which uh, I am very fond of. You can imagine you get to strap two of these onto a cruiser of some kind and you've got a real armor melting thing. Still! And this thing, by the way, isn't actually the best target for a Hesh gun because it's got lots of wood on it. But whenever that... actually... Nope, doesn't really have spore liner. Which is great! Yeah, one of the deceptive things about Hesh is that from the outside it can sometimes see like not much damage is being done. Uh, look at the block confetti. Uh, it's doing great damage to the inside right now. Also love how short barrels can be. Little stubby barrel right here. Like a shotgun. Okay, so that's enough of that. And what's this next one? This is a 400mm gun and I love 400mm guns as well. It's about... I don't know. I don't know. It's just similar to 200 millimeters, but bigger in terms of versatility and satisfaction factor. So, what is this thing? This is loaded with a weird shell. So, this is one of my favorite shells. In fact, I made a video featuring weird, wacky APS shells, and this was one of them. Uh, it's hollow point EMP. So, the downside is, is that hollow points are not nearly as strong as they used to be. They used to be real face-melting devices, provided they actually made contact uh, with armor or structural blocks. Uh, so they're not as strong. The good news is, shields aren't as strong either, so this is far more likely to actually hit uh, the hull of something, and it deposits a 3,000 strong uh, EMP jolt. And that solid warhead body is there just so the thump damage actually has a bit of armor piercing and a bit of extra thumb damage as well. So, this is not a gun, a shell rather, that is good at dealing large amounts of damage. This is a support shell. This is the shell you mix into your party mix in a multi-gun turret, and it just turns off the odd local weapon controller, it pops uh, smoke dispensers. If it hits the barrel of a cram cannon, it, it can detonate the high explosive pellets inside it, and it tends to do horrible things to detection systems if it hits them. Or munition warners for that matter. So, support shell, which I'm very fond of. It's also pretty darn good against things that are, as before, quite compact. So, what is an example of this? Let's have... what's something that doesn't have too much wood? Banshee! Let's turn you a little bit this way. So, pretty fast, and you see up there, there's already a lot of EMP damage going off here. So, are you firing, sir? Oh, it's AI dead. So, <laughs> so against uh, some craft that might uh, be able to take an extra high explosive shell or two, a hollow point EMP round will just fry their brains immediately. Let's do that again. Let's do that with this. Yeah, against a small or medium-sized craft, the shell is nasty. And against larger craft, if it hits in the right spot, it just turns certain systems off, and that's... Yep, that's a problem for you. Yep, AI dead. Im immediately AI dead. So yeah, this kind of thing, by the way... Uh, this also applies to disruptor shells, so if you want to turn the shell... If you're not a fan of the whole hollow point thing... Disrupt a warhead, get rid of the solid, 
uh, another EMP head, boop, and inertial fuse. And then you've got a straight up EMP shell that also weakens shields it passes through. Not as much EMP jolt, but uh, much, much faster. It is, disruptors are so fast these days. So yeah, that's EMP, and now you get to this ridiculous monster over here. This is a 500 millimeter gun with 8 meter shells. This is the largest kind of shell you can reasonably have, short of just uh, foregoing autoloaders completely and relying completely on ammo intakes uh, on the firing piece itself, which really slows the firing rate down. So what is this thing? This is just silly. This is uh, an example of a good uh, jack of all trade shell. So it's got a squash head and a single max special factor HE warhead body, shape charge secondary, penetration factor of 0.7 to get that, uh, where is it, that 20 uh, heat penetration metric. Another uh, warhead just to boost that. It's got a flak warhead just for giggles and to separate out these high explosive heads, which has the one job of just making as much explosive damage as possible. Then a few gunpowder things, basically the inertial fuse. So, what does this do? This does great things uh, to unsuspecting targets. So, let's have a big fat target. Let's have the Raya. Sorry, Raya, if you're watching this. Can you... There we go, let's make some noise. So, Kablooey, oh yeah, so this kind of shell does not care about armor, and it doesn't care a hell of a lot about lambs, because the shell has too much health, and yeah, this is a big ship, the Rhea is a big fat armored ship, and it, it the, this that gun is just blowing things off it, like, with absolutely no problem, it's quite fun actually. And if it hits one of these turrets, we are going to see fireworks. We Come on, hit a turret. You know you want to. Close. It's going to hit one. It's going to... Oh, jeez, look at that. It just peels stuff off like no one's business. Actually, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. What's in here? There's important stuff in here. Yeah, there's steam engines in here. That, uh, if it, there wasn't an air gap in here, uh, these engines would be gone. So. Yep, there goes a turret. There she goes. There she goes. There she goes again. Love it. Also, love, I almost called it the food color. Love the red tracer on these things now. That is a nice touch. So how thick is this armor? This is not the thickest armor in the world by the looks of it. In fact, no, it's not thick at all. It's only two meters thick. But, uh, yeah. I should emphasize that this is just one gun here. It is a very big gun, but uh, imagine a triple turret with this. In fact, I have built a triple turret like that. Which, unfortunately, I don't remember where I saved it, or even if I did save it. But yeah, like, uh, you can still do some pretty serious damage with a proper APS gun. And speaking of uh, funky things, so this is not my only big turret. Do, 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 do. I have one more. Large shields, too. So just to kind of uh, show off... Just how like uh, things can work in multiple gauges. These are all the same guns, except with a little difference. This belt blaster has been dropped down to 300 millimeters. It's high explosive now, so not as high explosive as uh, that 150 millimeter thing that we showed off before. But I believe it is slightly more efficient because it is a shorter shell. So we go here, we go there, there. There, there, there. Let's have, shoot at the daring again, because that's hilarious. Bang, 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 bang. And... 
great thing about spamming high explosive is that you always know what results you're gonna get. And those results are block confetti. Especially the, that of those arcing shots that get in above the deck. Delicious. So that's an example, just pretty much the same turret. You just change the shell and you get something just as good but slightly different. Now this one is kind of completely different really. This is still 400 millimeters and one of the great things about 400 millimeters is that it's a pretty decent gauge for flak to be at. So I haven't mentioned flak before. Flak is one of those weird things that uh, time drag is better for that kind of uh, airburst AA uh, for smaller shells, but once you get up into medium uh, gauge shells, about, about 200 millimeters, let's say, maybe 150 if you really stack it, you start to get pretty good flak damage. So, what gauge is this? 400 millimeters. Uh, this is the best of both worlds. This has an armor piercing head, and that's purely for the speed, so it's a fast shell. And these flak warheads with their 30 millimeter radius, 30 millimeter, 30 meter radius, and 2,000 damage is basically a giant middle finger to anything flying. So, I was testing this just earlier. If you have a flying thing which you want to die, preferably sooner rather than later, you call in the 400 millimeter flak. So particularly anything that is a combination of armored and uh, has bits that can be easily blown off. Yep, that's one of the... Uh... I'm not sure what that was. I think that was an APS gun. Yeah, that's uh, significant of components that are being flung off right now. And the great thing about uh, big timed flak shells is that they rip thrusters off. Like, I'm not sure if you saw, but... Uh, those were custom jet components that have just got flung off there. And that nice fast 700 meters per second shell. Yep, there, caught it. Almost. There we go. There we go. Zap. Okay, yep. Let's turn the UI off. Let's enjoy this. As, any, as ever, uh, things flying in a circle or a curve are a bit of a pain in the butt to shoot at. Come on. Yep. Zap. So this is uh, if you decide that, you know what, you want to shoot aircraft down with guns, big flak shells. Big flak shells. They're lovely, lovely. Yep, this uh, this thing isn't much longer for the... What the hell got hit there? What the hell got hit here? Oh, yes. That got hit. Yeah, so that's fun. And last uh, is EMP. So, if you want a big scary APS EMP shell, 500mm is probably the best way to be. Because here we have a big honking big shell with one high explosive warhead here, hollow point, two solid bodies, uh, 21,000 thump damage, by the way, which is pretty darn good for any shell that isn't a railgun. And thump armor pierce, not great, doesn't need to be, it can hit multiple blocks at once. 9,000 EMP strength, 3,000 damage, uh, also pretty fast, 471. So let's uh, have it shoot at something that uh, deserves to be shot at. Uh, let's have a twin guard thing. Let's have do, 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 do. Let's have great talent craft because those are always fun. Let's shoot at an iron wolf. Ah! Shooty shoot. Yep, and particularly against... what's that? That was... aha! So right here is why sticking EMP on APS shells can still be a good idea. 
They can come in at angles that uh, missiles and cram cannons, or even particle cannons, can't really do. And just that EMP jolt, which uh, reaches past layers of armor, or in this case doesn't really need to, because here's the heavy armor on the outside, can just reach through here and just zap uh, heavy armor layers off. And I did have this thing with frag instead of a high explosive, but you really need to sta stack uh, frag warheads in order to make this work. This thing's already tipping. I think we might have fried some ACBs off here. Please don't crash into my fortress, I'll be very upset with you. Whee! Yeah, this gun doesn't look so massive once you actually have a ship next to it. Come on, butt shot. Right, there we go. Woohoo! Yeah. So in any case, that's pretty much it. So, like, uh, the short summary I said earlier in the video pretty much covers everything. But yeah, it's like, feel free to experiment with uh, advanced cannons. Because a lot of different shells... Whoops, no inertial fuse. Uh, a lot of shell types work. Uh, provided you design them for what you're shooting at. So, let's turn everything off here. Uh, fail saves, people. There we go. Big shells. Big shells. This should totally be the thumbnail right here. Yep. Well, I can't even see the Iron Wolf anymore. What's happening over there? Oh, glorious destruction. So yeah, combinations of uh, different APS shells are where it's at. Because uh, one kind can uh, accomplish what another kind cannot. Jeez, mate, you are going to fly straight into me, aren't you? Thank goodness for God mode. Explody, explody. Yeah, actually... The way to think about APS now is think of it as a scalpel. It is the... When you put an advanced cannon on your craft, it is... Got a specific job. It can be tailored for pretty much any specific job, but... Uh, you should have a target in mind. Because you can't uh, just uh, spam one kind of shell type. And think that'll get you all the way uh, to freedom. Because against targets with really thick armor... Uh, high explosive doesn't really work so well. Against targets with like proper spaced armor or spore liner, heat and hash doesn't work that well. I also have a torpedo launcher on these, uh, in case that happens. But yeah, it's like, uh, I wasn't actually, actually expecting that thing to die so quickly. How about that? But yeah. Excuse you? So yeah, that is the, the APS uh, shell to gauge, uh, video. And yeah. So, if you have found, uh, after the, this uh, update, an APS shell that you think uh, works particularly well, or is particularly fun or interesting, uh, do share. I would love to hear about it. And keep in mind that the devs are probably still going to tweak numbers and names around a bit, so uh, yeah, just, uh, bear, uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, let's go make some guns, people. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell!